so welcome back again <coughs> in the continuation of earlier topics our next topic is how the plants can be used as a botanicals to control pesticidal disease normally we have seen about bacteria we have seen about fungi we have seen about npv we have seen about trichogramma okay we have talked about different 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 things on this lecture we will focus how the medicinal plants are used to control the pesticidal disease okay so among them first we should know what are botanical insecticides first of all we should know what are botanical insecticides see basically what happen botanical insecticides are insect toxins that is derived from certain plants okay botanical toxins are certain toxins that are derived from certain plants they have very quick action on target pests <coughs> okay their action on target pests is very very fast okay that they are, they are having broad spectrum action it means they can nullify the effect of all kind of pathogens they are not particular selective that whether they will stop such kind of pesticide or another kind of pesticide so they are non selective in nature it means they are having broad spectrum action okay means they are not able to select any kind of pathogen they can kill all kind of pathogen and most important thing they do not persist in the environment it means they are very eco friendly in nature okay so we should know before proceeding further what are botanical insecticide what is their importance what is their role so we discussed that insect toxins they are derived from certain plants are called as botanical insecticide botanical means plant second i told you they have very quick action on target pest they can directly identify the pest and they can take very quick action after that they are having very broad spectrum action okay after that they are having very broad spectrum action and they are basically non selective in nature non selective means they can kill all kind of pathogens at specifically it doesn't mean whether the infection is by bacteria by virus by nematode by fungi they can nullify all kind of infection very last two point that is very very crucial they do not persist in the environment okay they do not persist in the environment <laughs> okay then we discuss about different different plants among them first plant is pyrethrin okay among them first plant is what pyrethrin first compound among the various different natural compounds used first plant which are using is called as pyrethrin see this pyrethrin is a kind of insect insecticidal compound it is derived from the plant chrysanthemum cinerea folium the name of plant from which it is derived is is derived from chrysanthemum cinerea folium okay in the photograph you can clearly see the flowers of this plant it means this compound is isolated from the flowers okay if somebody asks to pyrethrin you will see see say pyrethrin has been isolated from the flowers of chrysanthemum cinerea folium okay next point they are do not mix with the soap solution we do not use soap solution why because soap solution contains certain fatty acids so that fatty acids may kill or nullify the effect of pyrethrins commercially this pyrethrins are available in the market in the form with the other names that is pygenic which is approved by omri medical research indian council it is known by another name that is evergreen 6% it means it is having 6% electrical conductivity so in the market this pyrethrin is available as pygenic 
along with another name that is evergreen so it is a very good broad spectrum use insecticide which is isolated from the flowers of plant chrysanthemum severa folium do not mix with the soap solution because soap solution contains certain fatty acids that may nullify the effect of this pyrethrin now we will discuss what are the target application of this pyrethrins we can see in the picture that in the crop how we are applying the pyrethrins in the crop basically the target insects are aphids cucumber beetles caterpillars means again their main target is insects only aphids cucumber beetles caterpillars they are best used against small size and immature insects why because immature insects do not develop completely their larva is not completed into the adult so they are very weak metabolically they are very weak so they can be easily applied on a small size and immature insects so that the insects cannot be mature because if insect will mature it will damage the crop at very high level so it's better to apply this pyrethrins on small size and immature insect then we can reapply frequently this short residual we can frequently apply pyrethrins in the crop in small scale small scale time okay then we have to add certain chemical that is pbo we will add this pbo to increase the efficacy of pyrethrins okay what we will do we will add pbo to increase the efficacy of pyrethrins right so we can add some molecules like pbo to increase the efficacy of pyrethrins to increase the efficacy okay so these are the main points of about pyrethrins the target insects are aphids cucumber beetles caterpillars they are best used against small sized and immature insects they are short residual which we can reapply frequently and then we can add <coughs> synergetics like pbo to increase to increase what to increase the efficacy of pyrethrins okay so next compound after pyrethrins we come to next compound on neem we all know that neem is one of the most important medicine plant which has been used in the indian culture since since long time okay because neem peepal and tulsi these are the only plants which is having very very high medicinal importance so the botanical name of neem is as a director indica the active component is as a directin the compound name is derived from automatically from the plant name okay the name of compound is as a directin okay this as a directin is available this as a directin is available it contains various products it contains oils soaps in the market it is available in the by the name of nemix moltex monterey and nemo you can see in the diagram that they are easily available in the packet in the form of nemo moltex monterey and nemix the nemix moltex monterey are the trade names of as a director that the active component is as a directin okay active component is what active component is as a directin it is a kind of alkaloid which is having very vast, uh, vast amount of biological importance okay so the name of compound is as a directin then we discuss about the target application of neem so the see it is a polyhouse lot of crops are growing are there these crops are affected by lot of insects so the neem has systematic properties it can applied on reduced lettuce aphids it can helps the neem can be applied on lettuce aphids which attacks on the seedlings the aphids basically attacking on the seedlings of the lettuce they are treated by as a directin again they are best against immature insects 
whenever they are applied as foliar spray okay so they are best against immature insects when they are applied as foliar spray along with that as a directing can be used as a tank mix tank mix means when we can use a large amount of water in that we can easily dissolve this chemical as a directing so always it is recommended to use spray mix as a effective measure okay so target application is to reduce the effects which are attacking the lettuce crops mainly of seedlings they can be applied as a foliar spray on immature insects they are used in the tank mix and premix six it is also effective okay so after that we reach to new group new, new group of compounds called as rotenol okay now uh, it is very important to know that we all use mosquito coils okay mosquito coils contains this chemical this compound its name is rotenol or rotenol we have been seeing that whenever the coil is burnt the smoke comes out though that smoke is very harmful for human beings but it can kill the insects so this compound the name is rotenol it is derived from the roots of plant called as deris robusta we can see this plant in the background this compound is isolated from the plant called deris robusta though this compound was approved organic till 2005 though this compound was approved organic till 2005 after that it was not organic because little bit some issues of toxicity was there of this compound so this compound is extremely toxic to the fish even the products with 1% rotenol are available commercially but they are difficult to find because government has banned this compound no doubt it is using currently also but there are some issues of its toxicity so they cannot be applied in the aquatic condition why because uh, they are highly toxic to the fish that's why so uh, <coughs> this compound name is rotenols isolated from the roots of the robusta they are extremely toxic to the fish and their products is is having 1% rotenol they are commercially difficult to find out we we'll discuss about three important compounds first we we'll discuss about pyrethins isolated from the flowers of chrysanthemum filia folium then we we'll discuss about azadirectin isolated from the seeds of azadirectin indica third compound we we'll discuss about rotenol it is isolated from the roots of deris robusta each compound is having its own medicinal value each compound is having own target application so we will discuss how we can synthesize this compound in the lab also but the drawback of rotenol is that it is extremely toxic for the fish that's why government has imposed a ban to routinely use this compound though it is available in the market but its application is very very limited so this is the name of the compound is rotenol or rotenol besides that there are some other compounds rhina and nicotine there are some other compounds name is rhina and nicotine <laughs> now these compounds are basically have been banned by the government so rhinia first we discuss about rhina it is derived from the rhinia spicicola it is the slow acting stomach poison okay this is slow acting stomach poison right so it will cause the poison in the stomach the so commercial products are difficult to find example is ranicide with 0.2% rhino it is prohibited by nop national organization program committee it has been prohibited by nop because of its side effects that it is not compulsory that every botanical product is good no it is not the case rhino has been banned by the government because it is causing poison in the stomach so it is derived from the plant rhino specicola specicosa the commercial products are difficult to find the name of product is rhinocyte but it's prohibited by nop nicotine we all know that nicotine is a kind of drug it is it is banned drug. 
nicotine we all know commonly it is called as tobacco it is derived from nicotiana tobacco its formulations have around 40% nicotine <coughs> because nicotine is having very high mammalian toxicity it can damage our respiratory system it can damage our nervous system it can restrict the use of many system it can inhibit the many metabolism system and it is prohibited by nop that is national organizing promoting committee so the name of chemical is rhina they are acting as slow acting stomach poison they are prohibited by nop nicotine derived from nicotiana tobacco their formulations have 40% nicotine sulfate they have high mammalian toxicity which restricts their marketing they can inhibit our nervous system they can inhibit our respiratory system so both rhina and nicotine are inhibited by nop and their banned compounds then besides the target effects there are some other non target effects of this botanical pesticides okay best first of them we should know that botanical pesticides are broad spectrum some compounds like rotenol and pyrethrin are little bit toxic to the fish these are the, these are the non target effects means side effects of this botanical insect botanical compounds so they are very toxic to the fish means mainly rotenol and pyrethrin one more uh, uh, point is there that if they come in the direct contact with the pollinators so it can be fatal for them so this pyrethrin can also be very harmful for the pollinators like butterfly grasshopper birds so what will happen when there is no pollination no germination of flower no growth of plant sometimes neem can also be toxic to the immature stage of beneficial species okay we know that neem can be good for immature insects but in it can be toxic to immature stages of beneficial species for example lady beetle for example lady beetle neem can be toxic to the immature stages of beneficial species <coughs> that is example lady beetle okay so there are there are some side effects of botanical pesticides then how we can reduce the side effects of this botanical pesticides how we can reduce the non target effects of this botanical pesticide first of all what we will do we will rotate botanicals with the softer products okay we will rotate botanicals with the softer products we should avoid direct spray over beneficial insects if you will spray on the beneficial insects what will happen they will affect the physiology of pollination if there is no pollination no flower no flower no plant no plant no fruit then the spray of this botanical compound should be done at evening hours because at evening bees are inactive because in the morning in the afternoon they are very very active they are in the search of nectar after nectar they are going for the pollution pollination so at evening hours bees are very very in inactive okay so spray at evening hours when bees are inactive next point we should always avoid to the direct spray of leaves on the upper side we can spray on the lower side means under side of the leaves not on the upper side why not upper side because upper side is in direct direct contact with the sunlight it helps in the process of photosynthesis chloroplast is there so if you spray on the upper side what will happen there is no photosynthesis no sunlight absorption no biochemical reaction because lower side of the leaves is shaded the sunlight do not reach on the lower side of the leaves so we should spray direct our spray to the under side of the leaves and finally whenever we apply this product whenever we apply this product we should know that the product should be used to reduce the toxicity the product before use should be dry out and it should be reduced to minimum level so these are met different methods how to reduce the non side effect effects of botanical compounds first to rotate them second do not spray on beneficial insects third spray at evening hours because at that time bees are inactive avoid the spray on the upper side of the leaves 
and try out the product before use or to reduce the toxicity. These are the methods how we can basically reduce the non-target effects of botanicals. Okay, so what we discussed today about botanicals, what is their importance? We discussed about three botanicals, pyrethrins, isolated from the flower of chrysanthemum folium genium. We do not use a soap solution, it is good insecticide. We discussed about as a direct in, isolated from as a direct indica from the heat part. It is used in the market by neem oil, Voltex, various names are there. Good against lettuce aphids. Pyrethrin is good against immature aphids. Third compound, we discussed about rotenone, isolated from the roots of Dairis robusta. In the mosquito coil, rotenone also there. It is very good insecticidal property. But there is one drawback that it is toxic for the aquatic condition of the fish. That's why we have reduced the non-target effects. How to reduce the non-target effects of botanicals. Then we discuss about two compounds, irina and nicotine. No doubt, they are botanical compounds, but they are banned by the government. Why they are banned by the government? Because rhina will do what? It will cause a small stomach poison. It acts as the stomach poison to the mammals. That's why it is inhibited by the NOP. Both rhina and nicotine are inhibited by the NOP, National Organizing Promotion Committee. Nicotine, we know it is very toxic for the mammalian cell. It can damage our nervous system, neurotransmitter system, respiration system, blood circulation system, excretory system. Nicotine is a kind of drug obtained from nicotine to become. It contains about 40% nicotine sulfate. So it is recommended not to use rhina and nicotine. If we will found using this compound, we can go to jail and it is unavailable. That's why the Indian government or the whole WHO, UNICEF, has recommended not to use these two compounds, rhina and nicotine. Then there are some side effects of botanicals and these are the methods. Now we can control the side effects of these botanicals. Then we discuss about how to isolate each compound in detail. Okay, we will uh, reach how we uh, isolate each compound in detail. So, first of all, we will discuss about rotenoids. How we can isolate the rotenoids in the laboratory. First of all, we will collect the plant sample. Normally, we will collect the roots of Daris robusta. We will shade dry the roots of Daris robusta. Why we shade dry? Because if you will go for the dry in the sunlight, the sunlight will absorb all the phytochemicals, important nutritional, which are present in the Daris robusta. So, we have collected the roots of Daris robusta. We will make it shade dry. After making shade dry, we will grind them for the fine powder. After shade dry, we will grind them for the fine powder. Then, what we will do? When powder is there, we will take about 200 gram of sample. <coughs> okay. What we will take? We will take about 200 gram of sample for the isolation of rotenoids. Then we will take one vessel, semi separating funnel. It is little bit like the cup shaped structure. In that, we will add two chemicals. First, we will add 50 ml of these are the recommended dose to isolate the rotenoids in the laboratory. So, we will add first 50 ml of acetonitrile and then we will add 50 ml of hexane. The so, total solution will be 100 ml. We will wait, we will rotate in the separating funnel, we will wait for its saturation. Okay, we will wait for its saturation. After some time, in the separating funnel, we will observe two layers. After some time, in the separating funnel, we will take what? We will see what? We will observe two layers. We will in the two layers, we will discard the lower layer. After formation of two layers, we will discard the lower layer. We will take only the upper layer. 
now in that upper layer we will put we will dip the our grinded plant material for 72 hours means at least for 3 days okay once we added 50 ml acetonitrile and 50 ml hexane we will wait for saturation in the separating funnel then in the separating funnel we will observe two layers liquid layers lower layer we will discard and in the upper layer we will add the grinded material of rotenoids okay we will dip the plant material in, in this upper layer for 3 days after 3 days once we dip the plant material in the upper layer we will filter it we will filter and dry once we go for the filter the residual material will remain on the separating funnel on the funnel which we will discard in the liquid part liquid extract which we of which we get we will make it dry and that dry liquid is the pure crude rotenoids a very simple protocol is there take 50 ml acetonitrile take 50 ml hexane keep in the separating funnel make the plant material in the powder form in the separating funnel get two layers discard the lower layer take the upper layer in the upper layer add the plant material for 3 days after 3 days make it filter the plant material will remain on the upside we will discard it the liquid part which we are getting as the extract we will dry it and thus we are getting pure rotenoids thus we are getting what we are getting pure rotenoids okay then we come to next protocol to isolate as a directin same protocol take plant material of as a direct indica which plant material seed material we will take 0.5 g powder we will add 50 ml of distilled water okay we will add 50 ml of distilled water then we will add <coughs> 0.05 ml of sulfuric acid okay then we will add 0.05 ml of sulfuric acid okay after that we will macerate the mixture after that we will macerate the mixture for 3 to 4 hours and it will be boiled gently for 20 to 25 minutes okay so once we have taken the plant material we have added 50 ml of distilled water after that we have added the 0.05 ml of sulfuric acid after that we will mix the mixture rotate the mixture in the stirrer for 3 to 4 hours with the slowly boiling at about 20 to 25 degree only the temperature should not rise okay the temperature should not rise so we will rotate it stir it slowly by boiling gently at about 20 to 25 minutes after that we will cool the whole mixture at room temperature after that we will cool the whole mixture at room temperature and we will add 10 ml of alcohol to remove the mucus part after that we will do what we will cool at room temperature and we will add 10 ml of alcohol to remove the mucus again we will go for filter dry it upper is plant material and <coughs> lower part is root sample of as a directive so this is a different protocol as compared to rotenoids where we are not making any layer directly we are adding the powder in the water we are adding sulfuric acid heat it mixing and filter and look at part we will dry this that is the crude sample of as a directive so very simple protocol is there in the lab but the time interval the temperature the quantity it has been all recommended by the established protocol okay it has been all recommended by the established protocols then we come to next compound that is pyrethrins now this compound is little bit tedious to isolate again procedure is same we know that pyrethrins has been isolated from the flowers of chrysanthemum cinerium folium we will take again some flower material 50 grams of flower we will 
you will collect the flowers again flowers will be shade dry you will make the powder then 50 grams of powder flowers they are soaked in 100 ml of petrol ether for 3 days the flowers are added in tea every compound is having different different chemical so during the extraction protocol we should not we should not get confused with the name of chemical whatever chemicals has been recommended we have to use that only because these are the recommended protocols so what we will do we will take 50 gram of flour we will soak in 100 ml of petroleum ether for 3 days after that we will filter the mixture by using water filter paper then what we will do we will calculate the amount of solid material will remain upon the water paper that we will discard but the liquid part which we, which we get after the filtration is a filtrate we will measure the volume of that filtrate suppose the volume is 10 ml what we will do we will add the ratio of methanol four times means either 20 to 80 suppose the volume of filtrate is 10 ml so four times is what 40 ml in that what we will add we will add 40 ml of methanol so the ratio of extract is to methanol should be 20 is to 80 okay the ratio of the extract should be is from 20 is to 80 okay so the ratio of the extract is from 20 is to 80 after that the mixture was shaked very vigorously okay the mixture was shaked very vigorously <coughs> so what we will do once the mixture was shaked vigorously we will left to settle down when the mixture was shaked vigorously again when it will be settled down after the addition of methanol we will get two layers again upper layer and lower layer again what we will do the lower layer we will discard and the upper layer which is yellow in color it is having a crude pyrethrins so i will repeat once again first what we will do we will collect the flowers of chrysanthemum we will dry the flowers in the shade dry make the powder of the flowers add 50 gram of powder flowers in 100 ml of petroleum ether for three days in shadow after that we will filter the mixture we will get the filtrate the above particle is residual we discard that measure the filtrate suppose the volume of filter is 10 ml four times in the quantity we will add methanol four times in the quantity we will add methanol means suppose the volume of filtrate is 80 suppose the volume of filtrate is 80 what we will do what we will do we will add four times methanol then again the mixture is shaked well okay again the mixture is shaked well then after that shaking of the mixture again we will get <coughs> two layers upper layer or lower layer lower layer we will discard and the upper layer we are getting the pure pyrethrins that is the completion of their extraction protocol so today i will repeat brief summary what we read today we read about botanical insecticide they are isolated from the plant they have quick action on the target pest they are non-selective they are having the broad spectrum action they do not persist in the environment they are eco-friendly then we discuss about specific compounds that is pyrethrins derived from flowers of chrysanthemum in era folium we do not add the soap solution because it contains fatty acids it can nullify the effect of chrysanthemum it is available in the market by the name of iganic which is already omri approved it has 5 percent nickel conductivity another name is evergreen evergreen is always available it is having 6% EC. Then, pyrethrin has selected target application. It affects on aphids, cucumber beetles, caterpillars. 
they are best used against small size immature insects i told you that we can frequently reapply paracetins we can frequently reapply paracetins okay <coughs> then we have to use pbo to increase the efficacy of paracetins we have to use pbo another chemical to increase the efficacy of paracetins then we we'll discuss about name botanical name is as a direct indica name of compound is as a direct in it is available as as a direct in it contains products different kinds of oils soaps example is nemix moltex untari nimoy example is nemix moltex montari and nimoy okay and they are commonly available in the market in the form of packet then we discuss about the target applications of neem basically to control aphids which affects the crop of lutes especially the seedlings of lutes again we can use as a foliar spray against immature insects but when we use as a directive i told you that we have to use large quantity of water so we call it as a tank mix Type means addition of large quantity of water in the particular concentration of as a directive. Uh, then we discuss about another compound, rotenol, isolated from which part? From the roots of Nadis robusta. It was organic approved till 2005. Extremely toxic to the fish. It is products with one with one percent rotenol are available commercially. but are difficult to find so the government has banned this i told you that mosquito coils contain certain amount amount of rotenol okay these mosquito coils contains certain amount of rotenol then we discuss about rhina and nicotine rhina isolated from rhina species nicotine isolated from nicotiana tabacum both are poison one is affecting on stomach one is affecting all metabolic system both are banned by the government then we discuss about another another side effects of botanical pesticides that they are toxic to the fish they can affect the pollinators especially parathens if pollinators are affected no germination no flower growth no fruit no plant and neem it can also be toxic to the immature stages of beneficial species like lady beetle so it is a drawback one one or two drawbacks is of every biocontrol agent one or two drawbacks is of every biocontrol agent neem it can be toxic to the immature stage of beneficial species mainly lady beetle <laughs> then we discuss how we can control the non target effects rotate the botanicals avoid direct spray for beneficial insects spray at evening hours when bees are inactive not in morning and afternoon because they are roaming here and there for the purpose of nectar and for the pollination next always spray on the upper side of the leaves not on the underside because underside is always protected from the sunlight and on the upper side they are having the sunlight so if you spray on the upper side leaf will get damage no photosynthesis no food for the plant plant will die and whenever we are using the botanical product we should dry it out the toxicity should be minimum it should be checked at the clinical trial level then then what we discuss how to isolate these botanicals in the laboratory what we discuss first in all the compounds rotenols paracetins as a directin we have to make the powder of the plant especially in the shade dry why in the shade dry so that all the nutrients and fatty chemicals present or do not if you will dry in the sunlight sunlight will absorb on the fine chemicals so how we taken the rotenols we take the plant sample we have taken one vessel separating funnel which is cupped funnel we we'll add two chemicals acetonitrile and 50 ml of hexane after some time we will get two layers we will take out the upper layer lower layer is discovered in the upper layer we are adding 
the granite plant material this granite plant material is for 72 hours or 3 days after that we will filter and dry this okay we will filter and dry this after that we will get crude rotenoids after that we will get crude rotenoids so next step is about acid directing what we will do take 0.5 ml of powder add 50 ml of distilled water we will add sulfuric acid again mixture bath macerate it for 3 to 4 hours we will boil gently for 20 25 minutes we will cool the mixture at room temperature we will add 10 ml of alcohol to remove the mucus we will filter it and dry it we will get the pure pure as a rectin okay then we discuss about final last compound pyrethrins select the plant sample make the shade dry add the plant sample in the solution of petroleum ether 50 gram of flour as we know that pyrethrin has been isolated from the flowers keep it in the 100 ml of petroleum ether for 3 days filter the mixture by using filter paper then the filtrate was mixed with the methanol means whatever the filtrate we are getting we have to measure it four times we will add the methanol again mixture is shaken vigorously we will wait for settle down again finally we are getting <coughs> two layers okay again finally <coughs> we are getting what two layers so upper layer and lower layer lower layer we will discard and upper layer is the yellow color which is containing the pure pyrethrins okay once these compounds are isolated further in the laboratory we have to identify these compounds these compounds are identified on the basis of various chromatographical techniques that technique is called TLC, HPLC TLC is thin layer chromatography first technique is telemelic conformation that is done by TLC after that we go for its quantification and purification that is done by HPLC that is high performance liquid chromatography and after HPLC we go for GCMS that is gas chromatography and mass spectroscopy to identify the compound to identify the compound that how many compounds are present in our sample and they are separated based on their relative in intensity and molecular weight <coughs> once these compounds are isolated and they are analyzed their further purification is done using column chromatography. Many industries are using producing these by bottle compounds. There are many research centers. You all know about Baba Ramdev. Produce its brand name is Patanjali. What they are doing? They are just isolating these compounds only from the plant at very high level, broad level, in large quantity. And they are selling. So they can become also a very good entrepreneur if you isolate these chemicals from the plant. We can become very good entrepreneur. We can sell. This compound is having very good international value in the market. So, we have discussed about use of botanicals. Which botanicals are important? Their plant part, plant name, their quantity, their importance, their side effects. Okay. How we can control their side effects? How we can isolate in the laboratory? Okay, so uh, I want to conclude this topic. So this was all about the importance of botanical. No doubt, they are having some toxicity, like they can be dis they can uh, damage the mammalian system. They can be harmful for the aquatic culture. But we can remove by using some purification techniques. We can remove their toxicity. <coughs> Okay, by using some, uh, what we can say, by using some purification methods like column chromatography, we can remove their toxicity. Final purification is done by column chromatography and that is further confirmation is done by certain nuclear magnetic resonance technique that is NMR. That is the beyond this, that topic is not in our scope right now. So means after crude sample is obtained. We go for its purification, isolation. Okay, so that's all. This was the topic of about botanical insecticide. So I hope this topic will help you to understand about the various botanicals, their importance. So 
थैंक यू वेरी मच